Hey, welcome back Marauders. In this video, section 1.5, uncertainty and measurement, we're gonna talk about taking measurements and recording to the correct number of significant figures and then doing calculations and rounding your answer to the correct number of significant figures. So when we measure something, we are always going to estimate between the smallest marks on the instrument. So here we have an example with a ruler that has marks every centimeter. And we're trying to measure the length of this line. Well, we can tell it's somewhere between four and five. We're certain of that digit and then we're gonna to estimate to one more digit. So I might estimate this as 4.5 centimeters. Now down here, we're gonna measure the same line, but with a different ruler. This ruler has a mark every 10th of a centimeter. So here we can tell that the line we're measuring is between 4.5 and 4.6. We're gonna to estimate to the nearest hundredth since our instrument has a mark every 10th. So this one we might estimate as 4.55. The number of digits we record reflects the type of instrument that it was measured with. Uh, similar case right here, we're measuring this, a different line and with the same two rulers. This one, it comes exactly at the four. So here, this ruler has a mark every centimeter, so we want to record to the nearest tenth, but it happens to come right at four. So this one we're going to record as 4.0. You wouldn't just record it as four because that implies that you only have one significant figure. But with this instrument having a mark every centimeter, we can estimate to the nearest tenth. Uh, down here we have the same line, also coming exactly right on the four, but again, with the instrument having a mark every tenth of a centimeter, we're going to estimate to the nearest uh, hundredth of a centimeter. So this one will be 4.00. The zeros are important, they're meaningful, they tell us a little bit about what type of instrument this measurement was taken with. So when you just look at a number, how can you tell what kind of instrument it was made with and how many digits are significant? The easiest rule is that all non-zero digits are significant. So in this number, 9.134, none of the digits are zeros, so we have four significant figures. All four of those digits are significant, none of them are zeros. With zeros, it's a little tougher. Uh, zeros between non-zero digits always count. So in this number right here, the zeros between the two and the three are gonna count as significant figures. That one at the end will not. So that has a total of four significant figures. Uh, zeros before the first number do not count. So these zeros right here are just placeholders. They're not adding to the precision of the measurement. All they're doing is placeholders. And so those don't count. So in this number we have the four, this zero, and the three count. That zero is between two non-zero digits. That's why it counts. So in that example, we have three significant figures. Uh, and then down here, last rule, zeros after the last digit only count if there is a decimal point. So in this number, 3,400, no decimal point. These zeros don't count. This has only the three and the four being significant. So that is two significant figures. Right here, same number, but with the decimal point. That decimal point's there for a reason. It's telling us that this is measured to the nearest one. And so this would have four significant figures. This number over here, Zeros before the first non-zero digit do not count, uh, but zeros after the last digit do count since there's a decimal point. So here, these would be your significant figures, one, two, three, four, five significant figures in that measurement. Let me practice this a little bit. Uh, so this first number right here, the zeros before the first digit don't count, but the zero between the two non-zero digits do. So this has three significant figures. This number has a decimal point, so all the zeros after the last digit will count. This one, all the digits are significant, so we have five significant figures. Here, zeros between non-zero digits are significant, so we have four. Here, uh, no decimal point in this number, so zeros after the last digit will not be significant. This has only two significant figures. And this number, the zero between the digits does count. The zero at the end does not count because there's no decimal point, so that has three. This number, we've got a decimal point again, so all the zeros at the end after the last non-zero digit do count, so that'll have four. Uh, zeros before the first digit do not count or not significant, but zeros at the end are since we have a decimal point. So this has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Uh, here we have a couple of numbers that are written in scientific notation. When you're looking at things in scientific notation, 
uh, whatever the 10 to the exponent is, that is just telling you, that's just placeholders. That's just telling you how big or how small the number is. Uh, but those are never going to add or reduce your number of significant figures. So all you have to do is look at the number out in front. This has one, two significant figures. The 10 to the 6 is important. You still need to write that, but it's not adding to your uh, precision. And then in this number, 1.2000, all those digits are significant because there's the decimal point doesn't matter that it's 10 to the negative third. That doesn't change how many significant figures we have. It is important. Um, but in this number, we'd have one, two, three, four, five significant figures. All right, so what are we going to do with this? Well, this is useful because when we do calculations in chemistry, uh, maybe we're going to do some multiplication or division, and then you get this big number on your calculator. How are you going to know when and where to round off? Well, we have a couple rules to learn. First, for multiplication and division, the answer cannot have more significant digits than any of the numbers in the problem. So say we had a problem where we multiplied these three numbers together, we did it on our calculator, and we got this as the result. Well, now we want to decide where to round that number off. So we're going to look back at each number in the problem. Each one of these is a measurement. Each one was taken with a different level of precision. This number right here has two significant figures, only the two and the one. The zero is not because there's no decimal in the number. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. One, two, three significant figures. So when we're multiplying these three numbers together, uh, the one that has the fewest number of significant figures is this one at the beginning with two. So we want to round our answer to have only two significant figures. So we want to round it to one, five. These are, no, these are still important as placeholders. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we'll round it off to uh, 150,000. Okay, no decimal point there because these digits are not significant, they're just placeholders. Rounding it to two significant figures because that was the least precise measurement in our problem. Uh, with division, the rule's the same. So dividing 31 by 45.001022. On our calculators, we get this. Where do we round it? So 31 is only two significant figures. Uh, this number is a lot more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight significant figures. So of course we're going to round our answer to two significant figures. So we round this off, we're going to have 0.77. Look at the next digit, it's a seven, so we're going to need to round up. So we're going to round this one to 0 0.78. Uh, the rule with addition and subtraction is a little bit different. The rule with addition and subtraction, it's not the total number of significant figures, it's the number of decimal places at the end of the measurement. So whichever one has the fewest decimal places, that's where you're going to round. So adding these three numbers together, uh, here we have a number with two digits after the decimal, here only one, and then here we have four places after the decimal. Um, so we're going to round our answer to just one place after the decimal. Uh, so this is going to get rounded to 81 point, we're going to look at the next one, it's a 7, so we round up, so it'll be 